Hi, I'm Brie. I'm a boudoir photographer in St. Louis. One of the questions that I get asked the most is what should I bring to my shoot? So I thought I'd do a quick run through of things that I would pack if I were to do my own boudoir shoot. If you're watching this, you probably found this on the blog of my website or you randomly happened to stumble across this on YouTube. Either way, welcome, I'm happy you're here. I'm doing this kind of just because I get asked a lot. Maybe it could be helpful to make you think of your own ideas or inspire you to expand your imagination, I guess. But honestly, just bring whatever you want. It doesn't matter. The only focus and the only thing that matters is that you feel good and that you feel like you look good, that you feel confident. That's all that matters. You could bring whatever you want. There aren't any rules. I know some boudoir, uh, some boudoir photographers are really strict about, you know, don't wear neons, don't wear wild prints. I feel the exact opposite. It really doesn't matter. A good photographer can make anything look good. Just bring whatever makes you feel great. My clients also have access to a big like wardrobe that I have that they can borrow from for their session. But I always encourage people, if they can, if you're able, to at least use the session to splurge on at least one new thing for yourself. You know, maybe bring something with like sentimental value to you, or if you're doing this as a surprise to your partner, something of sentimental value to them. You could show up completely empty handed and we could do a great shoot. So don't stress about it. It's all just supposed to be fun. If outfit planning and packing isn't fun to you, don't worry about it. It's supposed to be like a fun experience. Come with nothing and we'll make it work. Okay, so my plan for this video is to first show you a bunch of products that I would bring with me, and then I'm gonna go through wardrobe items. If I booked the shoot for myself to you know, celebrate me or my birthday or a promotion or just work on my self-confidence, uh, something like that, which is something that I heavily encourage people to do all the time. And then I'm gonna do another list that is what I would pack if I were doing this for my partner, in my case, my husband. That way, no matter who you're doing the shoot for, I hope that it helps you get creative or gives you some ideas, or at least makes it a little bit easier or a little bit more fun. Okay, so first, a water bottle full of water. And I know if it were me on the way to the shoot, I would also stop at Starbucks or Scooters and get my favorite coffee drink just for like a little bit of a caffeine boost just to treat myself. Okay, second thing I would bring is your favorite headache medicine. I am really light sensitive. I'll get like a migraine pretty quickly, even if somebody just like flashes the lights on when I'm not warned basically I will get like a pretty bad headache and when you're doing these photo shoots you have really bright lights in your face if you're doing a little tease session 30 minutes but if you're doing like a bigger session it could be an hour and a half or up to like four hours just in case you start to get a headache because if you're like me and you have a headache everything just kind of isn't fun anymore because you're miserable you know we don't want that to happen especially while you're trying to feel sexy and confident you don't want to have a headache next would be slippers or flip-flops or sandals or something that you can just slip on and off and wear around the house while we're traveling from changing area to the shoe area. One of the most challenging things in the editing process is the dirty bottoms of your feet. I totally understand why it happens. It's such an easy area to miss while you're getting ready. You don't think about it. You don't see it. But then as soon as we do a pose where the bottoms of your feet are showing, it is very obvious. It's really hard to edit in a way that looks normal or natural. It's just an area we don't think about. So bring some sort of like flippers or flippers slippers or flip-flops to wear while we're moving from place to place just to keep the bottoms of your feet clean if we can. Also, some sort of wipes because you might not notice that they're dirty until it's time to shoot and you know, you're know you changing, getting ready to come out to the shooting area and you look and you're like, oh my God, she's right, they're dirty. I would bring some sort of like wipe, baby wipe, even a makeup wipe. That way you can like double it if you like realize you, you know messed up your makeup a little bit. It's just a nice thing to have. I will have them for my clients to use, but I don't know if every photographer has that on hand. So it's a good thing to just keep in your bag. Speaking of makeup touch-ups, I would just bring a bag of my makeup so that if there's something I need to fix, I can fix it. I would also, I'm all tangled, would also bring a robe. I have a robe that's always ready and like clean and hanging up for all of my clients. Maybe you're, you don't know if your photographer will have one ready for you but it's kind of nice to have something to throw on and off from when you know, you're walking from the changing area to right before you're starting to shoot in a different spot. I know it might sound silly because obviously the photographer or assistants or whoever is gonna see you 
in your outfit, it, you know, but if you're showing a lot of skin, which obviously a lot of clients do for boudoir shoots, I understand how there's like a different context to walking around like basically naked or in lingerie. And I get that that's like a little bit weird. You know, maybe you want to wait until it's like time to start shooting to be like, okay, I'm ready. Okay, next I'll just run through some like quick kind of obvious items. Bobby pins, floss, deodorant, scissors. I tell my clients to, you know, to go through their outfits one by one while they're packing and cut off all the tags, but it, they're just so easy to miss. You don't think about it. My husband's calling. My husband just called me. He's back from a work trip and he was like, get in the car, let's go get lunch. And so I will be back. Okay, it's like an hour and a half later and I don't really remember where I left off, but I'm back and I'm full of mozzarella sticks. Other little things that I would bring with me to my boudoir shoot would be a body lotion. The more hydrated your skin looks, the more glowy and, you know, pretty it's gonna look. I kind of think I would like to use some sort of like skin like glitter type of thing something that makes me look a little bit like you know shiny and glowy i know there are lots of options a lot of my makeup artists use basically what looks kind of like a a lotion or a serum that they kind of just like put all over i'm only kind of mentioning these because it's something to think about the outfits are just showing a little bit more than you're comfortable with and you want to have a little bit more coverage that's great or you can just let them fly I would bring like a snack, like a granola bar or just something quick and easy and not messy. During like an outfit change, you can just, you know, take a few quick bites. Like if I were to have press on nails, I would want nail glue with me in my bag. <sighs> if I happen to have like the glue on eyelashes, I would bring glue for that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the kind of clothes that I would bring if I were doing a boudoir shoot. So each photographer would have, you know, a set amount of outfits that you would shoot in depending on the package. Pretend I'm doing a shoot with five outfit changes. If I was doing a shoot for myself, the first thing that I would want to bring was something that I felt was flirty and cute. I hesitate to use the word feminine because that should that means different things to different people and like feminine is what you believe it is, so you know, whatever. I would want something just kind of like playful. This looks kind of ugly just like this, but it was really cute on the model. Maybe even something like like this, this is just like a see-through top. It's just kind of more playful and cutesy than typical like sexy lingerie or anything. And that way these pictures could be a little bit more, you know, playful and flirty, maybe like some smiles. It can be a little bit more difficult to make things like big, you know, toothy grins look in place when you're wearing like something really like strappy and sexy. Sometimes facial expressions that are more like neutral or a little bit more serious or seductive with those outfits look best. I have this outfit that I think is from like Savage Fenty. It reminds me of Selena and I love Selena. So like maybe I bring something like that instead, something with some glitter or just something fun that made me smile, made me happy um, and made me feel, you know, pretty and flirty. For my second outfit, I think that I would pick something that was more cozy. There are two different routes where you can go with this, and honestly, I would struggle to choose one, so I brought both to show you kind of what I mean. A big, baggy, neutral sweater with knee-high socks. If you're doing five outfits or even three, why not have like a different flavor for each one? Now, having said all of that, there's nothing wrong with just bringing three very similar outfits or five very similar outfits. I'm kind of just doing this to give you some ideas. Maybe you don't want to photograph yourself in a big baggy hoodie because you're doing this to show off a body or celebrate a new found relationship or like respect or love for your own body and you want to show it off. So like obviously you don't want to cover it up with something big and baggy that doesn't really show your shape. Another thing that I would maybe choose for this, like a, you know, more cozy kind of vibe that I'm talking about would be something a little bit more sporty. I think that could be really cute. Like a crop top type of sweater, some sort of like even shoe, which I know that sounds crazy, but I have done shoots with, you know, like tennis shoes and, you know, they're a little bit more sporty and they're just as sexy as the lingerie pictures. Maybe something with like a cozy sock, bikini brief type of underwear. And I might even like throw my hair up for that one. Don't be afraid to bring, you know, props or little things that kind of speak to you and your interests or who you are, or your hobbies or, you know, whatever, whatever you like. Um, I am a huge reader. I have been since I was a really, really little girl. I would just maybe bring a book, especially to go with, this isn't a favorite or anything. It was just the one that was closest. I could just, you know, have this in a few pictures. It's easy, it's small. I've had people bring ballet shoes. I've had people bring stuff from their favorite shows or movies, make the shoot feel like really special and personal to you. Okay, for my third outfit, if I was doing this for myself, I would pick something classic, black, sexy. I personally really like 
these kind of tops that kind of like go down a little bit more. I know I would bring something with like a garter belt and stockings. Even though those things kind of tend to cover more skin, there's just something about like a garter belt and stockings that I think is so sexy and like feminine and powerful and I just, you know, feel really good in it and that's what I would want to be photographed in if I was investing in a boudoir shoot. So far for my five outfits, I've picked something kind of flirty, something kind of like cozy or athletic and something that makes me feel, you know, really sexy and sensual. And then for my fourth one, I think that I would go for something that makes me feel powerful and obviously that can mean a lot of different things to different people. I think I would choose red. Red is a color that makes me feel bold, maybe just like a little bit out of my comfort zone. I also think for this outfit I would wear heels. Another thing that just popped into my mind that you could do if you were wanting a more like powerful look would be a blazer to put over lingerie like leaving the blazer kind of open but you know you can see the lingerie underneath i think that could be really fun i've done that a few times it always looks really really nice especially if you bring bold jewelry or like a watch or maybe something that's kind of reminiscent of your job something that just makes you feel strong and powerful and independent and you know like nobody could take you down for my fifth outfit i would pick something kind of glamorous and dramatic like i would never wear otherwise or you know never have the chance to wear some sort of gown so i just kind of picked one that was from my client closet that like nobody's worn yet this is like a one-shouldered kind of like glitzy type of thing i would do kind of like the gown falling off of me unzipped or like me just kind of like barely holding it up really dramatic and full of glam and you know how often do you get to like wear something like this i have a ton of these like a ton i think i have like four of these really dramatic fluffy robes that a lot of people love when they come over whenever they see them on the mannequins everybody's like oh my god can i wear one of those even if you only throw them on for a few photos it's just like so much fun to like play dress up sometimes so my fifth and final outfit would be something very dramatic something i would never get to you know wear in my daily life ever okay now i'm gonna kind of switch gears i'm gonna go through what i would pack if i was doing a shoot for my partner in my case my husband i love doing shoots for people who are surprising their significant others i used to photograph weddings and one of my favorite parts of you know the morning while everyone's getting ready would be if the the bride or the groom or whoever was opening a boudoir shoot from their fiance the like blush on their face and like their little like smiles and their little giggles and they'd be so giddy was one of my favorite things to photograph such a cute surprise it's kind of unexpected it's really intimate it's so romantic it's such a nice gesture and it's really just something sweet you get to treasure for you know ever as you grow old together so the first outfit that i would pack if i were doing a shoot for my husband would be something revolving a hobby or interest that he has and there are a lot of avenues that you could go this way i have done all sorts of shoots for people i have photographed people baking reading on honestly on and on and on if you can think of it i've probably photographed it my husband has a lot of interests but an easy one that i just kind of like thought of like very quickly it didn't take much work was video games so he loves playing video games he's very good at them if i were to do a shoot for him i think that that's something that i would do that he'd think was really cute you can make almost anything work if you think about it for a little while i have actually worked with controllers several times before for you know somebody who either they themselves love playing video games or they're doing this as a surprise for somebody who loves playing video games and it can be really fun to get creative with controllers and it's just so easy back in the day when these still had like cords it would be fun to kind of like drape them over and you know you'd have nothing covering yourself but like a controller if there's like a show they love a movie they love if they love to skateboard you could bring a skateboard and we can kind of like pose the skateboard in front of you and if they love music you could bring records or like headphones i even had a client whose husband that she was doing this as a surprise for was very into cannabis and we got really creative the photos turned out incredible she looked awesome and he loved them no matter what the interest is i am sure that we could come up with something okay so the second thing that i would recommend if you were doing this for somebody else you know your partner would be something that you already know they love to see on you so without getting like too intimate or too detailed i would probably bring something black something kind of strappy or you could even ask them there are ways even to ask without 
giving away the secret if you're trying to do this as a surprise. Maybe they have like a favorite color on you or something. I like the idea of buying something new if you can swing it. It's kind of two surprises in one because he gets to see you in the, you know, the album. But then also you can have a second surprise later by having that outfit that's just, you know, in your house, ready to go. Maybe there's something that your partner has expressed that they would like to see on you. Maybe there's some sort of fantasy that you know about that you, by the way, are comfortable with. Don't do anything that you're uncomfortable with. Maybe there's a favorite part of your body that they really love and you could find an outfit that really accentuates that or shows that off. There are lots of ways to get creative there. For the third outfit, I would recommend something that kind of speaks to or shows a nod to your relationship, whether that's just your relationship in general terms or something in the bedroom. Maybe you're engaged and um, you've got a wedding coming up or maybe you already are married but something that kind of is a like throwback or a look forward to the wedding. You can wear something that you plan to wear on the wedding night. If you are already married, you could rewear what you wore on the wedding night or you know, you could wear just your veil and nothing else. And if you preserved your bouquet, you could bring that. If it were me, I think that I would bring just the tie that he wore on our wedding day. Might also do a few with a veil, like nothing but the veil. I have the outfit I wore on our wedding night, but I it doesn't seem like new and exciting to me, so it kind of like diminishes my interest to be photographed in it, I guess. But you know, I hope maybe that's not the case for everybody. But I think I would want to do something still like new to me so that it still feels fresh and exciting. Like maybe just the necklace I wore on our wedding day and nothing else. I think that could be really fun. Uh, I know that bringing dress shirts is a very, very common thing for boudoir shoots. I hesitate to say this because I want you to bring what you want to bring. Sometimes when you are somebody in the profession, things kind of start to lose their specialness or uniqueness or whatever you want to call it because you've seen it so many times it almost starts to feel like a cliche to you. But I completely understand that just because I've seen it, you know, so many times that client's never done that before and to them it is fresh and new and exciting. And if they're excited about it, then I'm excited for them. My hesitation is that it's really difficult to make them look good. They're always boxy, they're always baggy, there are only like, you know, maybe three poses that you can do and then it starts to kind of feel like redundant. Okay, if it were me, again, for my fourth outfit, I think that I would pick something completely unexpected, something that he would never expect to see, and that could be a lot of different things again, obviously, and you can get really, really creative. What I would do would... I've never done this before and I've always wanted to do this with a client, so if this is something that you would want to do, book a shoot with me and we can go do it. But I would love to do a series in lingerie but with a trench coat over, you know, heels and a trench coat, and out in public. You would obviously have to do this in a very safe and respectful way. There are lots of places that you could go where there's nobody around. I think that could be so much fun and so unexpected and unique and out there. You could bring something related to their job that would be a nice surprise i've had clients before who bring you know the uniform of their partner or something it's nice because they're kind of like when did you steal this from the closet or how did you sneak this out and i didn't notice another thing that i've done quite a few times actually and it usually looks really great like if they turn out great it's like a shower if you're not comfortable being fully nude I have done shower shots where the girl is in a white t-shirt. If you feel overwhelmed coming up with ideas for that, your boudoir photographer should be able to chat with you and come up with something really fun that you're really excited about and that you know your partner would love. Last but not least, what I think would be really fun is to do something that would make your partner laugh or smile. I just love the idea of somebody flipping through a boudoir book and they're just like mesmerized by how sensual and sexy the whole book is and then they get to the end and they're like, oh my god, that's why I'm so in love with you, that's so funny. If you are doing this for somebody on like your wedding day, everybody kind of has like jitters, not about getting married, but just about, you know, it's, it's a nerve-wracking day. There's so many things going on that could go wrong. You have to stand in front of so many people. Doing something that kind of makes them giggle in the morning, I think that's so sweet. So what I would do, and to be totally honest with you, something I have already done, my husband is maybe the world's biggest Breaking Bad fan. So what I would do Man, if you've never seen this show, this is going to be so weird. I would do Walter White's tidy whities and goggles. It really made him laugh. I'll try to find a picture that our wedding photographer took of him looking at the pictures. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, where they get to the end and, you know, stress just kind of goes away because they're 
laughing and they're remembering that they're like so in love with you and the nerves don't matter. Okay, that's it. We did it. Thank you for watching. I hope that this served, you know, as like a template for you to get creative or build off of or you know maybe gave you some ideas or inspiration. I don't like to put rules on boudoir shoots. Like I keep saying, it's all about what makes you feel good and what gets you excited. You're probably investing a good chunk of change into your boudoir shoot. It should be something that you really look forward to and that you really treasure forever. Thank you so much. I hope that you do book a boudoir shoot, whether with me or somebody else. I think they're really, really fun and I think they're really good for you. I wish that everybody could do them once a year. I think they're a really, really good confidence booster and obviously I'm biased, but I think they make great gifts. So no matter the reason, they can be really rewarding and uh, I encourage you to take the plunge and do it. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. See you later.